All right, today we have Dr. Tallman with us for Pain Frame. Dr. Tallman, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you today about something that's really, uh, I'm passionate about, and that's pain psychology. So I've been a clinical psychologist for almost 10 years now. Uh, my primary practice is working with chronic pain patients, but I also work a lot with medical patients as well. Uh, up on our physical medicine rehab unit. So we've got a, a fantastic outpatient program and work very closely uh, with Dr. Matthew and with Stacy. You know, Dr. Talman, uh, it has been an absolute pleasure working with you. Uh, ditto. Uh, sincerely, he's not just a friend, but a, a wonderful, wonderful clinician. Uh, I've been super excited all week to get this video because I think it's going to deliver so much content. Um, Dr. Talman has taught me a lot uh, about mindfulness, mindset. Um, we're in the middle of this pandemic uh, and our fans, patients, subscribers all want to know when the world is falling apart with COVID, I'm scared, uh, am I going to get sick, is someone I, I love going to get sick? What are some simple things, Dr. Talman, they can do at home to help navigate the madness? Uh, absolutely. I, I think the first thing is to know that we're going to experience a wide range of emotions for anything like this, right? So you're going to be feeling fearful, anxious, low mood, even irritable, and even angry about the current situation. So number one thing is just to acknowledge that you're going to feel a wide range of emotions. And the more that we try to control our emotions and control our thoughts, that's really, really hard to do. So uh, the best thing that we can do is try to control our behaviors. And we can control our behaviors by doing a number of different things. Uh, you had mentioned mindfulness uh, earlier. One of the best things to do is try to keep a present focus perspective and being mindful. So for example, when we start thinking about things in the past, the shoulda, woulda, couldas, we get depressed. When we start thinking about things the truth. in you. the future, like if I'm gonna be able to feed my kids, or if my pain is going to flare up, or if I'm going to be able to make my house payment. All of these things cause tremendous amount of anxiety. And again, these are just thoughts. A thought is a thought. An emotion is an emotion. So instead of pushing these things away, we actually want to invite them in, embrace them, and be mindful or in the present moment as much as we can. So we can do that lots of different ways. Uh, a simple mindfulness exercise is, and we'll just do it right now just to be present and look at five things around the room. So for example, I can see that there's a, a nice glass or cup in front of me and it's a stethoscope. I can feel my feet on the floor. I can see some beautiful paintings on the walls. So right now, I'm not thinking about what I gotta do later today. I'm not thinking about yesterday. I'm centering myself in the moment. So being mindful and using mindfulness activities but also there's lots of other things, you know, doing things that are meaningful for us, like exercising, eating healthy, uh, engaging in, in activities that are important to us. So uh, one of the things I've been talking with my patients about is thinking six months down the road or a year down the road, how do you want to remember this difficult time? How do you want to remember how you coped with it? So doing things that are meaningful that can help ourselves, our family, our friends, and our community. So that might mean making personal protective equipment, it might mean sending a family member, a friend, a text message to check in. So doing things that we can control, being present, focused, and mindful uh, with our current situation. Awesome, awesome, that's great, that's great. Dr. Talman, how did you get interested in the world of psychology, pain psychology, and um, um, to our viewers, you have all have seen different doctors and providers along the way. There are providers that you may feel like you don't connect with. Uh, I feel like Dr. Talman has this natural gift of connecting with most people. I, I think, uh, my opinion, Dr. T, is that it comes from this place of that you sincerely care. But how did you even get interested in psychology? Great question, Doc. Uh, I had two parents that were both in the helping professions, social worker, my dad was a marriage and family therapist, whoa, so whoa. that certainly had a big influence. Whoa. I love doing research as an undergraduate student and as a doctoral student, so I was always interested in the brain-body connection and how we can take scientific information and, and help our patients. And I really got interested in pain knowing that it's a population of, of individuals that are oftentimes uh, mistreated and, and misunderstood. 
and don't feel uh, validated for their pain related issues. So I felt like from a psychological standpoint, and we know that there's a tremendous amount that we can offer patients that have pain related concerns. And many times patients with chronic pain have never been offered to see a psychologist or a pain psychologist or been or examined uh, any types of biopsychosocial factors. So if you have chronic pain related concerns, you haven't been evaluated by a psychologist or you haven't uh, had any types of coping skills, you're really missing out. And uh, we, we know that there are many different types of, I call these biopsychosocial factors, our thinking patterns, our behavioral patterns, stress. If one of those, if one of these things is out of whack, it impacts the entire pain cycle. So we really have to identify what are the different thinking patterns? How am I thinking about my pain? Am I overdoing it? Am I underdoing it? How are all the, the different stressors in my life? If we can control some of those things or learn ways to mitigate those, then we can have better control over the pain. And that's essentially what, uh, what a health psychologist or a, a pain psychologist does is helps people take better control of your pain. I like to decrease pain and, and sometimes we can de decrease pain with things like mindfulness meditation and clinical hypnosis and biofeedback. But really what I help people do is regain control over their lives and using things like you know, cognitive behavioral therapy to take more control. The, the name of the game is to increase function and to get back to doing the things that you were able to do in the past. Uh, Stacy, in your own practice, when you're seeing uh, pain patients, it's been uh, five years now that you've been practicing, uh, how have you felt um, the need for pain psychology in the management of your patients? Well, yes, just like what you've said, you know, patients who experience with pain also have this overwhelming feeling of stress and anxiety, not only if they can have their pain controlled, but, you know, other stressors in their lives, like financial difficulties, mm -hmm. marital stress. And so I think it goes hand in hand, absolutely, with pain and stress and anxiety. Uh, Dr. T, uh, you know, getting into the topic of mental health, mm -hmm. a lot of times when I'm seeing patients, they're very apprehensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to start therapies. Uh, they come, our awesome viewers, they come in to see us for back pain. And some of my sweet patients have been hurting for years. Uh, they've seen hundreds of doctors uh, and finally have kind of given up and somehow ended up seeing us. Mm -hmm. uh, what are ways we can encourage uh, our patients to get in to see a pain psychologist because mm -hmm. often they have this fear, disbelief. Mm -hmm. uh, they almost feel that uh, Stacy and I are uh, are kind of underplaying their pain. Mm -hmm. Doc, it's a great question, and it's one that I come across uh, and talk with my patients about a lot of the time. Patients, I think, sometimes are concerned that the psychologist is going to say, "This pain's all in my head." They're, it's not going to be. We're not going to validate their pain experience. I never question whether somebody is in pain. Uh, it's it's not productive, and that's that person's experience. And who am I to judge that somebody's pain is a six or a seven or an eight or a nine? Right. So that's their experience. So first of all, pain psychologists are not going to question your pain uh, at all. Secondly, is we know from all the national guidelines, right, that have come out in recent years, and all the literature that. Pain management, chronic pain management, really is a biopsychosocial and multi-dimensional approach. We have to have a number of providers that are addressing this. Many times we have a physiatry or maybe physical therapy, aqua therapy, but oftentimes that pain psychology piece is left out. And we know that if we're missing those factors, we're absolutely missing the entire boat with helping somebody manage their pain. So. For the patient, if you have chronic pain related concerns, you haven't seen a psychologist yet, um, I strongly encourage you to get one. It's really, in some ways, a disservice that you haven't had the opportunity yet. And quite frankly, we just don't have that many providers in the state of Iowa that are helping people manage their pain. So one of the really exciting things that we're doing at St. Luke's right now is part of our pain empowerment program, the PEP program, is helping people take back control of their pain wow. through two different wow. modalities. I love, I love the title, Pain Empowerment Program. That's awesome. So again, our goal is to empower patients to take back control of their lives. And really this program uh, has an entry point, uh, two different entry points. The first one is a program called Silver Cloud. Now, 
uh, Unity Point Health in Cedar Rapids is really on the cutting edge to be able to deliver Silver Cloud. Silver Cloud is a mental health based app. It's a platform. You can download Silver Cloud on your, your smartphone, your wow. tablet, Whoa. your computer. Whoa. Okay? And it has cognitive behavioral therapy modules that help patients learn adaptive coping skills. Again, this is all research based to help manage their pain better. What's unique about Silver Cloud that separates it from other self help apps is that we have a coach, right? So we have identified a really talented social worker at St. Luke's, part of our team, who's going to help coach these patients in Silver Cloud to the various modules. So patients sign up for Silver Cloud. They get on, they complete some measures about their, how their symptoms are doing. They can start participating and learning these various coping skills. And then a coach reviews their work once a week and lets them know that, you know, maybe they're having some sleep related issues. Try this sleep app. Or maybe there's some thinking patterns that are getting away. Try this thinking pattern app. So especially right now when patients are really concerned about coming into the hospital and of all the craziness that's going on, this is a resource that people can use at home to be able to manage their pain better. Even better, once patients manage their pain, they're using Silver Cloud, we have many patients that are going to, I think, going to start doing this, and they're going to want to come and want the real thing. And that's where point number two comes, is that our pain empowerment program, we also have an in-person program where patients come in for an initial pain group. It's kind of like a class where patients come in and learn about the biopsychosocial model and different types of uh, coping skills and if they're interested and eligible we can then enroll them in an eight session cognitive behavioral therapy which is the gold standard treatment for chronic pain concerns uh, I'll also mention that we just I, I'm, I'm a data nerd I love to get in the numbers so we've been collecting data for all of our patients for the last 18 months and I can say that of all the patients that have gone through our program so they come through our initial program they go through the CBT modules uh, in our, our CBT group. So over a three month time span, patients are experiencing a roughly 30% decrease in depression, 28% decrease in anxiety. And I think this is the kicker here. They're reporting that they're doing better from a physical functioning standpoint. Wow. So even though we're changing, we're helping people's moods, we're also helping them do better from a physical functioning standpoint. So we know that it works. The, the challenge is getting people to come in. Um, and I, I'm hopeful that as people start to engage in Silver Cloud and do some of these other things, that we can get them into our program. Wow. So who has access to Silver Cloud right now? Right now, if you are a patient in Dr. Matthew's clinic uh, or seeing coming in and seeing Stacy, ask your providers about Silver Cloud. We'll give you a telephone call. We'll set you up. Essentially, uh, we'll give you a call. We have some wonderful brochures. You give us your email address. We send you the link to Silver Cloud. You yeah. sign up. You're ready to go. It's Super that easy. easy. Super it's easy. that easy. And it's embedded in your chart too. Yeah. So we're working on the embedded piece in the chart, but it's some um, some of the information will be included in your medical record. So, for example, if you're enrolled in Silver Cloud, um, but at some point our medical record and Silver Cloud will talk nicely with with one another. That's in the works. Okay. Doctor T um, and our awesome YouTube viewers, one thing uh, I don't want to gloss over. Uh, especially with everything that's going on with this virus, uh, something that brings a lot of fear is when you don't understand it. Yes. And uh, one of the big things Dr. Talman does uh, through Silver Cloud and his pain psychology group is educate, understanding a little bit about what's going on inside of you. Because when we understand a little bit, uh, that's when the anxiety level drops. Uh, without taking that first step of trying to learn a little bit more, if you're just basing it on the headline news, mm -hmm. you know, uh, about uh, a lot of people are dying, uh, a lot of people are still living. Uh, there is, a, uh, unfortunately, a very sad section of the, the country that are hurting and hearts mm -hmm. go out to them. But most people are doing well even through this pandemic that we're all living through. I, I wanted to ask you something uh, that surprises me, and I'm sure Stacy's experienced this yeah. too. When you're grocery shopping for your family, yes. uh, there's plenty of apples, there's plenty of oranges, mm -hmm. uh, there's plenty of kale. Yes. 
But the one thing that's missing in all the aisles is toilet paper. <laughs> Why is that? Toilet paper's gone. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think there's uh, speculation and a number of thing, number of uh, ideas of why this might be occurring. And one thought is that if it wasn't paper, to toilet paper, it could have been something else. So if all the chocolate syrup would have gone up initially, and there was a run on chocolate syrup, and the media picked that up, maybe people were running out on chocolate syrup. That's a possibility. Part of it is the scarcity piece too, is where we see things. Um, we see other people buying something, we think we need to have it as well, that it's a scarce resource, even though we know that there's abundance of, of toilet paper and that really it's kind of a supply sure. chain issue. Sure. Um, the, the other part is that we want to be able to control something, right? So in a time when we don't have a lot of control, buying something, buying maybe toilet paper, having that supply, we're able to actively do something when our world seems uncontrollable, unpredictable, ambiguous, and we've lost a lot of our, again, our autonomy and control. So it makes us feel good because we're actually doing something, um, even though it's toilet paper. Yeah. So I guess those are just a, a couple thoughts. That's awesome, that's awesome. It, it's really interesting, Dr. Tommy, you know, I never thought, uh, Stacy, that people would be able to keep six feet apart and uh, wear masks, you see a lot of that happening, hand washing going up, but, uh, at least in the state of Iowa, everywhere I've been, I mean, people are being really strict about social distancing, and it's just a, a term we've never heard of. It's just interesting to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, you know, I actually don't like the term social distancing. Wow. Wow. I would prefer physical distancing because social distancing connotes that we can't have social connections. And just because we need a physical distance right now, doesn't mean we can't keep in touch socially yeah, with yeah, our with various true. apps, Zoom, video conferencing. We know a lot of people right now are feeling very isolated absolutely, and absolutely. feeling a lot of losses. So we have a holiday weekend coming up. People are not gonna be able to spend that time with family members. We're not able to go out to restaurants and, and do the things that we used to enjoy. So there's a lot of grieving right now, our, our lifestyles and being able to stay connected socially is really, really important. So for all the viewers out there, um, continue to reach out with your awesome. family members, with awesome. friends. If your symptoms are really high, just certainly contact a mental health provider. I know in Dr. Matthew's office, we'd be able to you know, help you get hooked up with whoever that person might be. Um, but to taking care of yourself is really tough. And oftentimes for Iowans, that's very hard. You know, We're kind of under the pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality. As healthcare yeah. providers, we have a difficult time reaching out. So now is the time to treat yourself like you would everybody else. Wow. Wow. Dr. Tallman, uh, what are two things that patients or viewers can do at home to decrease stress? Good. I, th I think one thing right out of the gates is to know the types of information that you're getting and where you're getting them wow. from. Wow. Many of us are on social media. <laughs> Social media is great. True. Social media is great to connect, but there's a lot of research to suggest that if we're getting our social media, if we're getting news or the information from just exclusive social media, that it might increase our amount of anxiety and stress. Yeah. So also research suggests that if we're getting it through traditional media or social media, that just exposure to media in times of really difficult and challenging uh, times again can increase our stress. So that's one. The second one, again, is to engage in the present moment. So again, not thinking about the past, not thinking about the future, and I'm honestly inviting these difficult emotions in. We have a tendency to humans to push things away. We want to avoid feeling sad, anxious. We want to avoid our pain. So I'm going to ask you to do something counterintuitively. Invite the pain in, invite some of these emotions in. It's part of the human experience. It might seem counterintuitive, but we're going to experience a range of emotions, a range of thoughts, and instead of pushing them away, being present with them, uh, I think can really be helpful. It's a mindfulness type perspective. Well, I want to say that I'm very grateful for this moment. Yeah, uh, If you don't already, please follow us at stanmatthewmd.com. Our goals are to bring you awesome guests and get a lot of information out to you. Uh, for our patient family who sees us, uh, Dr. Talman, it's not just him. He's got a team of people that are supporting his passion to help uh, our patients do better uh, with their chronic pain. Uh, so we'd love to see you at the office. 
Stacy, we're still open. Yep. You need anything, give us a call. We, we, we'd love to catch up with you. You know, the uh, times are strange, but I, I want to encourage you. This is a period of time. Uh, we're not going to be like this forever. Uh, we're not going to be uh, personal distancing forever. Uh, life will get back to normal, so slowly be encouraged. Uh, any last minute thoughts, Stace, Dr. Talbot? No, thank you for being here. Hey, it's, it's been a real pleasure to chat with you both today. Uh, you're fantastic providers, and yeah, I look forward to continuing to work with you in the future.